hello everyone and very welcome to the Cetix webinar. Today we are going to talk about how we shall consider the soot thief related hazards in conjunction with ISO 26262. My name is Amin Amini and I'm Swiss chair of ISO 21448 uh, called SOTIF and uh, also ISO 26262 committee. I'm uh, responsible for the automotive project at Cetix. So before going to the technical content of the course, uh, maybe some clarification. Uh, this course is about uh, is uh, the, the draft version of the SOTIF. Therefore, any content uh, that you may see here may be changed during the, the next few months since the SOTIF standard is under the development. Another important topic is that we are all in a learning phase. Even the experts writing the standards, we are continuously learning. And uh, at the end of this uh, one hour of webinar, you will not become a SOTIF engineer. But if you're interested, you can contact me later on because we do offer the SOTIF, uh, SOTIF course online or on site. And uh, you don't need to take any photos or screenshots because we are going to upload uh, uh, the, this video of the webinar uh, later on to our website that you can access directly without any uh, login necessary. And uh, we are going to end uh, up the webinar with a Q&A session. And uh, last but not least, uh, I would kindly ask you to to keep your uh, mic muted so that it's easier for others to hear. Some quick introduction to our company called Certex. So we are a certification body uh, on the functional safety domain and the cybersecurity or OT security with a big, big focus on automated uh, systems. And uh, our mission is to identify the right uh, applicable requirements for this kind of systems and evaluate them that they are fulfilling all the functional safety and cybersecurity standards. And the same scheme applies for different domains that we have. Um, I'm coming from this uh, automotive uh, and automated mobility solution, but we have also the robotic automation, machinery, drones, and railway system in the scope as well. So who we are? We are a certification body, as I mentioned before, and we are accredited uh, by the CIS accreditation body. That means that the certificates that we are delivering, they are worldwide recognized. And um, we are based in Switzerland, yeah, and we, in order to be able to support uh, the innovative uh, solutions, we uh, are actively participating to, to the standardization and uh, normalization of the new topics such as SOTIF. And uh, so finally, the services that we offer are about training at the certification of engineers and the assessment of the product means the technical evaluation of the product uh, from an independent uh, view. And uh, beyond of the assessment, we can also certify the products and also certify the, the company process uh, to evaluate if they have correctly integrated the functional safety or cybersecurity process for the development part or production part. An overview on the, our training uh, scheme. So we have three level of uh, trainings. The first level is for, uh, let's call it beginner of functional safety or cybersecurity, which is Red Belt. If you have some experience and some uh, required qualification, you may apply also for the Black Belt. And if you are a specialist or an expert, you can also apply for the master uh, course that you may take an exam at the end. And here is about to give you an overview about the uh, courses that we are currently offering in automotive part is about ASPICE that you may know about the uh, capability of an organization to develop software. Another one is the classical ISO 26262 about functional safety at different level and sort if one or two days depends on the technical uh, deepness that you would like to go on. And so all these courses are also um, uh, available online. You just need to send me an email if you're interested later on. 
Another one that could be interested for some of you is about the requirement engineering. This IREP uh, is a recognized international uh, certification course uh, about how to write, how to specify, and how to maintain and manage the requirements during a safety project or a cybersecurity project. Um, some words about our services and the products. So we always start with a with a gap analysis uh, about uh, to identify how far we a product or a project is from being compliant to the applicable safety or cybersecurity requirements. But we can go beyond of that and go to the full certification project is about identifying at the beginning what are the applicable requirements for that specific product and then evaluate technically during the assessment phase and evaluate the process on the, during an on-site uh, audit. And if all the requirements of the assessment and audit uh, are fulfilled, then we can deliver a certificate <clears throat> which has an accreditation behind it. And the uh, last slide about our organization. So what are the advantage of uh, doing a certification project is basically the market enabler. So you can uh, target the international markets with this kind of certificate for your safety or security solution. And it also enables you to protect your IP uh, without disclosing the, all the technical details. You may uh, prove that uh, you, are, uh, you have a safe or a secure solution. And it's also about branding and make sure that you have technically or someone has technically evaluated from independent point of view about your product yeah so that that's it for the uh, introduction of the company now let's uh, uh, start with the webinar itself uh, so maybe just some introduction on the context of the sort if uh, let's be clear that uh, without, because very often uh, colleagues ask me what what's the relation of the SOTI with 26262 and beside we have also the cyber security. So what's the real relation between these standards? So with some sentences, we can clarify the situation. Without cyber security, we cannot ensure safety. And without SOTI, we cannot ensure functional safety for the automated functions, especially. And uh, without 26262 or the classical functional safety, we simply don't have safety. So that's the relation. And the message here is, we really need more than one single standard to cover all the uh, all the risk and hazards and harm related to uh, automated functions. So, a bit of uh, context or uh, through an example for the SOTIF. What's the SOTIF about? Uh, so imagine that uh, you are uh, driving uh, your car in an automated fashion, and uh, uh, you have uh, this uh, AEB uh, function activated and uh, suddenly because of any reason or any trigger events uh, because of the strong glare or um, a kit painted in the 3D format on the road or a, uh, a very bad weather you are your, your AEB system is not able to, to recognize the object uh, or the road or the lanes properly therefore what it does it uh, activate the emergency braking and this may uh, ca uh, cause an, a harm. So here at, with the sort of a standard we are targeting to avoid this kind of uh, hazards during the operation, not necessarily to a failure but maybe to the design weaknesses or in other type of insufficiencies that we may have. That's the context of the sort of. And, uh, how we deal with this kind of real life scenarios uh, in the context of SOTIF. Well, we have decided to, uh, to uh, divide uh, these real life scenarios into four areas. The area number one, which is uh, noun and unsafe, they are nice because they are safe. Then we have also the unknown and safe. They are also, it, area four is also a, a nice area because we are still in a safe um, situation. What we really care about is about area two, which is a noun and unsafe. It means that during the development, during our analysis, we know what are the what are the potential uh, scenarios that our system may be in a trouble. Therefore, we need to think about it. And a very simple example: they are exactly the same that we have seen beforehand, or maybe texting during uh, driving. So they are this kind of misuses are also included in the scope of SOTIF. 
But what is a bit more interesting in the sort of uh, standard is about ARIA 3, so the unknown and unsafe scenarios. Uh, here, this picture summarizes perfectly um, uh, an example for ARIA 3. Uh, here you can see a very strange object on the road. So the question is how your automated function of your AV will deal with that. Your car, your anyway, your neural network has not been trained to object or to classify this kind of objects on the road. So how it will react? You will detect it as a person, as a bicycle, as a car, or you will not detect it at all and you will you are going to hit him so uh, these are the typical example of area 3 which are unsafe and at the same time unknown and uh, so they put a big big accent on the verification and the validation of the part 2 and 3 to make sure that the, during by the mean of the simulation and other kind of tests we can minimize this risk so this is the scope the, the closest or the organization of the of the sort of a standard today we are going to focus only on the part uh, six and seven which is about identification and evaluation of the hazard caused by the intended functionality and later on about the triggering events so what why these hazards related to the intended functionality are happening okay what are the causes so at the beginning of a sort of project, you start with a situation like that. So you have a key distributed uh, risk amongst the area. But what we are really targeting to achieve at the end of this sort of uh, project is to minimize this uh, critical area, area two and area three. So noun and unsafe uh, hazardous and unknown and unsafe hazardous. This is the, the real target of sort of. And then regarding the, the process is even if you don't see perfectly a V cycle, however, the V cycle of 26262 has been uh, considered for development of this process because similar to the I26262, we start with the definition of our system. So here we have a functional system specification. And later on, based on our design, we are going to evaluate what are the sort of related hazards, okay? And ask ourselves why these hazards are happening, okay? What are the cause? What are the trigger events uh, that may cause this kind of hazards? And then evaluate for area 2 and area 3, do we have sufficiently covered all the, all the risk regarding the noun and unknown hazardous scenarios? If the answer is yes, then we can do a, a release uh, for SOTIF. And uh, then how we can um, correlate the activities or coordinate the activities of 26262 with the SOTIF. Uh, here we can see the classical V-cycle of uh, uh, of the um, 26262 and the links with the closes of the SOTIF. Our focus today is on HORA. Uh, so the message is here we need to take care about the part, uh, the close number six and seven of the SOTIF standard. So just to clarify the, the ultimate objective that we have with the uh, with SOTIF in the context of the horror, because beforehand we had this uh, hazard analysis and risk assessment in 26262, which was uh, dealing with a failure happening in a particular scenario. While with SOTIF, we consider also some hazards related to the uh, sensor limitations, decision algorithms, or any kind of misuse of the system for engagement or disengagement of the system or during the operation during the operation so uh, in the context of uh, an, of an av development we if we cons if we analyze the sort of related hazards it may impact uh, the definition or specification of our safety goals here so the final effect would be maybe we need to modify our safety goals so that they are able to cover SOTIF and 26262 at the same time. But in order uh, to understand 
how we need to do it, first we need to clarify some uh, some vocabularies and the scope of the SOTIF. So what are the uh, targeted activities that we need to perform in the scope of the SOTIF? The uh, first one is about uh, understanding that the SOTIF does not apply to the faults covered by ISO 26262. Okay, so whatever is defined as a fault which result to a failure in the 26262 series of the standard is not covered by SOTIF because by SOTIF we are trying to cover what we call the functional insufficiencies of the intended functionalities or reasonably foreseeable misuse by the person. Okay, so they are from two different nature uh, of the faults which lead to the failure later, later on. However, we need to combine them and we need to consider both of them. And um, keep in mind that SOTIF does not solve all the problems. We cannot cover all the hazards which are not covered by 26262 by SOTIF. So here you have a list of the example of the risk uh, that are not covered by um, SOTIF such as uh, fire, heat, radiation, or uh, reactivity, corrosion, or any kind of, uh, uh, let's call it, um, passive-related hazards are not covered by the SOTIF. And uh, the scope uh, in the public uh, version, in the past version, which is publicly available, uh, the scope of SOTIF goes up to SAE level 2. Okay, But in the meantime, uh, it has been decided in t at, the, uh, at the ISO committee that to extend the, uh, the scope to, to level 5. Okay. But SOTIF does not apply to the existing um, sem semi or fully or partially automated function or any kind of existing uh, functional safety relevant function in the cards. For example, for uh, this dynamic stability control or the airbag system, we are not going to reapply SOTIF, okay, because they are already safe. So SOTIF is mainly related to the new functionalities of the AVs that needs uh, a special care, such as a perception or localization or a past planning. These kind of the new new topics, they, they shall be mainly covered by SOTIF. And uh, Another important, important topic of SOTIF is about our, uh, foreseeable misuse. So because uh, we know the interface of the car or we know the way that a person may engage or disengage as an automated function, we need to think about how we can deal with this kind of misuses in advance. Okay, We are going to see later on some idea how we can deal with this uh, foreseeable, foreseeable misuse. <clears throat> so now that you know the context of the SOTIF and you know also the scope, I think it's the uh, right time to discuss about the hazards, how we need to take care about the SOTIF-related hazards. The first question that we need to ask ourselves is, shall we really distinguish between the functional safety and the SOTIF hazards? Let's have a look at the definition or the official definition of the hazards in two standards. In SOTIF, we define hazard as a potential source of harm, while in 26262, we identify potential source of harm caused by malfunction behaving of the item. So the difference here is mainly about the causes. Okay. At the end of the day, we care about harm. Okay. But why this harm are happening, the causes are not the same because but in 26262 malfunctions means having a specific failure of your safety function in a given scenario. Okay, while in SOTIF is not necessarily linked to a failure or is not necessarily uh, linked to a given uh, to a given scenario, uh, therefore we need to identify the different causes for these different uh, definitions. However, even if the definition are not exactly the same, but they are consistent because if we have a look on the ISO 26262 uh, standard, they define, put in, as I wrote here, is the same uh, definition. However, there is a small note, very interesting. This, is, this definition is restricted to 26262. A more general definition is potential source of harm. So SOTIF <coughs> took this part for the definition, a more generic uh, definition of the harm. 
which is fine and they are consistent because at the end of the day no matter which definition of the hazard we use we care only about the physical injuries or, injuries or damage to the health of the persons therefore the objective uh, or our vision is still the same we just need to these two standards to, to come from two different angles to cover all the related hazards. So to summarize, what are the similarities of this uh, of the functional safety and sortive hazards? So they are both defined at the vehicle level. Okay, so not at the system or the functional or component level. We just want to may understand what is the consequence of this hazard at the vehicle level. Okay. And bo for both hazards, we need to identify an acceptance criteria or a validation target. Okay. Whenever you identify a hazard later on a safety goal, we need to think about how we are going to validate that. So this methodology and this mindset is still valid for SOTIF. Both standards consider the misuse related hazard. However, it's a bit more strong uh, in SOTIF in, uh, because uh, in functional safety we have the misuse uh, requirements but they are not really well described or they are not strongly present in the standard. Here we, we support this <clears throat> lack of functional safety by SOTIF as well. Uh, another similarity is about the, um, the classification of the hazards because in functional safety we use severity, exposure and controllability uh, and it's the same for uh, SOTIF. The main difference is that for SOTIF we don't have any associated ASIL or any safety integrity level. Okay, So we don't have this tag. This tag does not exist in SOTIF. But this concept of the severity, exposure and controllability exists. And uh, another um, main difference of the hazard into two, in between these two standards are about uh, definition of the malfunctions. Okay, so the malfunctions are related to the failure in the functional safety, while in the sort of they are related to the insufficiencies or the performance limitation. Could be a sensor limitation or actuator limitation or any kind of insuffic insufficiencies in your software algorithm or whatever. So they are the main consideration for so, uh, sort of hazards and um, in both the standards we consider a hazard in a given uh, scenario or situation okay so this methodology is also very valid for sort of um, a bit of deviation here we have uh, we have a new uh, definition of, of scene scenario and situation so uh, 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 a scenario is a combination of uh, temporal combination of several mm, uh, scene and out of this scene and combination of the scenarios we are interested only one for one specific snapshot which we call a situation okay why because that particular situation may be relevant for our driving function so if we have any uh, design weaknesses or insufficiencies or performance limitation in that particular situation we are going to have a problem or a hazard in uh, for our driving function that's the definition of the uh, situation in SOTIF which is quite similar to the um, to the 26262 uh, so they are the common part now in order to understand uh, how we need to uh, combine them okay and is it possible to combine them yes it is possible but how I would propose to first have a quick look to the classical way of hazard identification and risk assessment used uh, by 26262 so here we are talking about the hazards caused by malfunctions so the item definition um, that we have uh, in the in the part 3 of 26262 give us a clear uh, requirements that we need to identify the function here we mean safety functions the the malfunction associated to every single functions and uh, in which operation mode these safety functions are activated so once we have this uh, the, a clear definition of our item then we need to identify the risks okay so here I 
uh, I provided a very simple example um, how we deal it. Probably all of you or most of you know perfectly how you deal with these horror tables uh, in the, in context of 26262. So you have the operation mode. You have a function here. I took the example of a lane keeping assist system, and you have the uh, malfunction associated to them. Uh, so our function here is about the detection of the lanes so that we can keep the car in the center of the lanes. So uh, what kind of, we may have a lot of malfunctions. So just, uh, just as an example here, we can have, well, we are not able to detect uh, the lanes for any reason, or we are detecting them too late. And uh, in which kind of scenario situation this kind of malfunction could be critical? Well, if we are on a motor highway and we have, a, we are driving at a high speed and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, um, we don't have um, a full visibility of the lanes nader. So, if we are if you are having this malfunction in that situation, it will result to a hazard. Okay, so the hazard would be unexpected lateral movement. Means we are going to probably to hit the guardrail and crash eventually. Okay, so if this is happening, we we it's because we may expect some fatal injuries. So we are in case of severity S3, which is the maximum. And since we are in a highway, and being in a highway is probably considered as more than 10% of the operating operating time, then we are also reaching the maximum exposure. And because of the high speed and the limited visibility, the driver cannot really control in a given time the uh, the hazards. Therefore, it's very difficult to control. We also reach the highest controllability level and then we end up with AZLD. And we associate a, a safety goal so that we can cover the, the harms related to these hazards. This is the classical way of doing that. Now, the question is, how can we integrate uh, the sortive consideration into this process? So regarding, um, we may give a specific attention to the, um, to the situation definitions or uh, evaluations. Uh, the, actually, mainly during the uh, ISO 26262 or project, we use uh, some existing uh, situation catalog. So here you have, for example, this VDA 702 examples. I gave you here some part of that. It, it guides you if you are in that particular driving at the low visibility, which kind of exposure you have to follow if you want to go the, if you want to evaluate it from the duration perspective or the frequency perspective. Another one is this SAE J2980 or some other companies they have also their own internal catalogs that you, they can follow. This is fine. Now, if we want to evaluate the hazards caused by the intended functionality means the sortive related hazard. So <clears throat> how we do it? Well, it's quite similar uh, to 26262 because at the end of the day, as I mentioned before, we are going to <clears throat> evaluate the, the exposure, the controllability and how severe is that, okay? But we need to be careful a bit because we said the hazards or harms at the end of the day, they are the same. We are going to uh, we are going to have fatal injuries. So the severity definition is or consideration is more or less the same. Regarding the exposure is a bit different because in functional safety we define the exposure as being in a particular situation and having a failure. Okay, while with sort of the insufficient uh, see the insufficiencies may not necessarily be related to the situation. So not because we are in a highway that uh, we are going to have this problem or this failure or these insufficiencies, okay? So we cannot always relate a exposure to a given situation. We need to consider also the insuffic insufficiencies and design weaknesses or even the misuses of the function. And controllability is defined as a capability of the driver or person involved in the scenario to, to avoid the, uh, the harm, okay? 
Here, uh, since we are talking about uh, automated vehicles, uh, well, we may expect that the driver uh, in, uh, intention or the driver reactivity is much less than the normal uh, and the conventional cars. Therefore, we need to identify what are the factors that may impact on controllability. Here, maybe we can consider the infrastructure. So if you have this V2X function involved in your AV the project, you may expect that this V2X message or v from the infrastructure, basically, V2I or I2V, may provide you some relevant information that helps the system to control the hazard in a better fashion. So you need to follow the same mindset for the HARA of the SOTIF, the definition of the controllability and exposure. They need some particular attention, okay? Because you really need to make sure that you understand what's the difference and then go to the severity part. So here, uh, we said exposure means being in a particular scenarios or relate the sort of hazard for a given scenarios. But why uh, these hazards in a given scenario are happening, okay? The cause, we, the cause of this, um, uh, these events, we call them trigger conditions. So what are the trigger conditions? They are the specific condition of the scenario that serve as an initiator for a subsequent system reaction, which may lead to the hazardous behavior. So <clears throat> we have some noun or unknown uh, scenarios okay, that may lead to the uh, potential hazardous behaviors. Or on top of that, we may have also some misuses, which one of them or both of them will relate to the hazards. And in, if we have this hazard in a particular scenario, we may have a hazardous event. Okay. And if the people involved means driver or other uh, particip road, uh, scenario participant, they are not able to avoid the harm. Uh, to avoid a hazardous event, then we are going to end up with a harm. Means that we are going to have, we are going to injure someone, or we are going to have a fatal injuries, or some minor injuries, any kind of harm. So, if this is the process of the of the hazard of the sortif, then how we can combine them? Here is a it's a logical part. So we have the malfunctions due to the failure in a given scenario coming from 26262. On top of that, we need to consider noun and unknown trigger events, okay? So coming from part two or part three. And on top of that, we need to think about what are the design weaknesses, okay? So if you have a specific function, we are going to be uh, operational in everywhere in the world, or we have a specific ODD and we really need to make sure for our specific operational geofence operation, we are going to have a very robust design. So any of these three factors may lead to a malfunction. So here the, the message is that the definition of the malfunction sh may be uh, or shall be considered in a wider perspective because malfunction could be caused by the failure or trigger events of the design weaknesses. But this part of relation means malfunction will cause the hazards. Uh, it remains true. That's the re relation between these two uh, standards. So since we discussed about the trigger events, how we need to analyze them. So what are the recommendations to do so? You can use First of all, uh, two, six, uh, sorry, SOTIF standard provides you a, a series of methods that you can follow, uh, analyze of your requirement, the, imagine, uh, uh, analyze of your use cases or basically your ODD. And uh, if you have access to the ac uh, accident statistic or the functional dependencies, uh, or if you have any specific knowledge from previous uh, project and uh, any of these methods could be used either in a qualitative or quantitative or uh, you can do it in a deductive uh, which you very often uh, now as the FTAs or inductive that very often they are associated with the FMEAs so no matter how you do it you just need to 
make sure that you have identified sufficient uh, trigger conditions so that you can claim that you, your area two and three are uh, at the end of the sortive project are sufficiently sm uh, small. Another thing is if you really want to use this statistic, uh, use the statistics that are really applicable to your ODD case. You cannot say, well, in our country, we have this kind of uh, accident, therefore I will uh, do some assumptions on my, on my system. So no, you cannot do that. It should be really credible. And if you would like to use the simulation uh, or basically an extens extensive simulation, you may use the Monte Carlo simulation that probably most of you know about. So just to give maybe a, a simple example about um, trigger conditions. So have a look on the left video here about this LKS function. So we are perfectly able to detect the lanes. So, well, great. But if we go and use exactly the same uh, system in another scenarios, you can see that the performance of the system are really not acceptable because we are not able to detect the lane properly and we are going probably to crash in this example to the guardrail. So why in these kind of um, scenarios happening? Because we have either a trigger event from the uh, software algorithm limitation, probably we are using the wrong col uh, color channel here or any kind of reason. And what could be a potential solution, either we use a software redundancy or we use a dynamic filtering in order to solve the problem here. Because here we have a lot of glare, we have a strong light, then we have the shadows and we have also the curves. So we have a lot of com uh, the factors that they combine together, but we need to be, be more robust. So we may, there are some um, obvious uh, trigger conditions that we need to take care about. Another one could be related to the hardware. Maybe our our uh, uh, camera is not performant enough for the for the range of the light variation that we have specified for our uh, sort of ODD, and we cannot uh, therefore validate the targets that we have. But if I want to summarize all the trigger conditions related to the algorithms. We basically categorize them in the environment, location, uh, road, urban, uh, or highway infrastructure, driver behavior or expected behavior of the other drivers, and <clears throat> driving scenarios. So here, have a look. You have the construction on the roads. So you may have a very, very strange uh, road infrastructures, or you may have also a lot of misuse of the system. And uh, these are the uh categories that you need to think about okay you have a you have a given odd for your odd how you need to make sure that trigger events are sufficiently covered for all these categories and then the same for the sensor and the actuators so here we have the weather condition mechanical disturbance emi acoustic glare accuracy wrench or any other uh, kind of reasons <clears throat> and for example um, we know uh, by experience uh, that uh, the GNSS or the GPS receivers, they they behave a bit differently when we are close to an airport. Okay, So these kind of known and unsafe scenarios shall be considered. Or we know uh, by the statistics that the ABS may fail because of this EMI interference. Okay, So this kind of thing you need to consider and cope with that. So what are your safety strategy to make sure that during the operation, this intended function will remain safe. And uh, another part of this trigger event is about uh, uh, foreseeable misuse, basically. And uh, they are caused basically uh, due to the lack of understanding of the driver. And they may expect, uh, they may have a wrong expectation of the system. But how you can deal with this uh, expectation of the, of the drivers well, one of the great examples given by Sotif is the, using the existing video on the internet. So the, this buzz video that you have publicly available on video could, is, is a great source. Have a look how people use them. Or you can also do it with the, um, studies with test person or analyze of use case and scenarios if you have them specifically. And 
uh, interaction of the driver with the system. And uh, here one interpretation could be not only the driver, but maybe also the teleoperator, because nowadays we are talking a lot about the teleoperation in in the context of the connected auto and automated vehicles. So why not to evaluate um, the capability of a teleoperator, how fast he can gain the control of the car in a given time to avoid the hazards. So these kind of things could be evaluated for the foreseeable misuse. So now we had the example of the LCAS for a classical horror. Now you have understood what's the definition of the trigger condition for an ODD. ODD for those that they are not familiar with the concept is operational design domain. And you need uh, to define a specific operation in a given and a geofence area. So the definition of the malfunction in 26262 is the failure or unintended behavior. Okay. Therefore, in order to make sure that during uh, this unintended behavior or in, or in other way around to make sh sure about the in intended functionality of our item, we need to uh, include a trigger condition in our in our um, ODD uh, of Hara. Here I put in a real example. So this is just in front of our office because here the, we have an, oper an automated shuttle uh, operating every 15 minutes. Okay, so uh, and now the shuttle shall deal with these particular and very difficult scenarios because we cannot detect the, the lanes because they are covered by the leaves and we cannot uh, go and remove the leaves every single day only because of a car. Therefore, this kind of limitations are sometimes given by the ODD and it's up to our system to deal with that. So still operational and safe, even in that kind of scenarios. That's the intention of the, um, of the um, sort of, at least at the hazard risk and uh, hazard analysis and risk assessment part. So to summarize how we need to fulfill this part, we are talking about 22 trigger condition categories, such as weather, EMA, glare, or whatever. Then, <clears throat> In order to uh, create the, uh, in a systematic fashion all the categories that we need, we may use some uh, some noun uh, methodology like uh, like HAZOP, okay, that use the guide words. So, for example, if we are accelerating too much, or we do not accelerate uh, sufficiently, or we uh, change the lane too early or uh, or too late or or any other uh, guide word that we may use so if you combine them we end up with the 220 categories of the trigger events and one example could be well wet roads with a strong glare in direction of the driving at 50 kilometers so every single trigger conditions that you define here shall be a part of these 220 categories and very often I'm asked how much uh, trigger events shall be identified to make sure that our area 2 and area 3 are sufficiently covered. Well, there is no uh, specific number or a threshold, okay? It, because this kind of analysis are based on your ODD. If you are operating uh, on a test track or on an air, um, airport or urban mobility test lab, so probably you have hundreds of them, okay? But if uh, you want to develop a uh, fully automated taxi in a big metropolis, probably you are going to end up with millions of the trigger events, even if you use the equivalent class. So equivalent class means that we categorize a series of tests or a series of analyses in one single class. So doing this kind of analysis, it's very uh, time consuming and you need a lot of expertise from various uh, domain. Therefore, what is recommended by uh, by SOTIF is to use the systematic approach. And one of the systematic approach that is proposed by uh, SOTIF is about the systematic uh, systems theoric process analysis, is the STPA we call it. Okay, so STPA is basically uh, um, composed by two step, and for this horror part, you need to cover at least the step number one. 
okay, which is about the identification of the unsafe control actions. So the 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 top the this is not a topic really for today the CPA, but I would just give you a very simplified uh, example of the CPA. So here you have a list of hazards, okay, and then once you have this list of hazards, you use this guide word. Okay, for your function, which is activated and engaged, and you also evaluate what's the driver fallback means uh, of capability of the driver to take back the control of the car. Okay, here we are not is not ensured. We are not sure that the driver, in a specific given time, can control the car, and then we try to allocate uh, the list of hazards that we have here to a guided word. So if we have this function and this function is not available or is uh, available but it takes too long to be available or suddenly is activated by itself so this kind of analysis by the guard word will lead us to define what we call an unsafe control actions just an example the vehicle does not follow the lanes when the process for detection and the lane take too long okay so once we have these unsafe control actions, we need to ask ourselves: Does our do uh, the, this, the does the safety goal that we have for this hazard cover perfectly also this unsafe control action on top of the ISO 26262 hazards? That that's the main advantage of going through this STPA. First of all, it follows it somehow force you to follow a very very systematic approach for identification of this kind of uh, unsafe control actions and later on you need to do a bit of reflex yourself to make sure that your safety will cover this use ucas to conclude functional safety and sort of uh, related hazards at the vehicle level are often the same and they shall be considered at the vehicle level and not at the system or component level. You can combine the functional safety and sortive HARA and it's even recommended. And uh, if, you, if you do so, basically the result will be that you are going to have more malfunctions, not only to the, uh, fail, due to the failure, but also to the in, uh, Insuffic insufficiencies or the performance limitations and you are probably going to end up with much more scenarios and situation in your hara because you're you're assuming that your your automated function is engaged and as i said before you need to make sure that your safety goal cover the sort of and uh, unsafe control actions and uh, functional safety related hazards and another um, statement regarding the process, uh, most of the companies, they have uh, the functional safety concept, uh, functional safety process in place. Therefore, um, you try to identify the common part between SOTIF and 26262 and then create an integrated approach. Means if you have a specific test which is requested by SOTIF and by 26262, then you do it once just to factorize. And uh, for companies that they don't yet um, uh, have established functional safety process, in this case, I recommend that you com you start with both because I have seen the having the approach first integrating 26262 and later SOTIF, it will um, cost you much more than doing the both standard at the same time. Yeah, I think uh, that's it for the webinar of the today. Uh, now it's the time uh, for having some exchange. I don't really uh, want to call it a question and answer session because we are all learning. So except from the question, if you have also any opinion or experience that you would like to share with other participants, do not hesitate to do so. Now you have the, the chat box available and uh, uh, I'm happy to answer your question.
So here we have a question. Is there any equivalence between AZ levels and SOTI failure rate targets? Uh, so far, not. So uh, we don't have uh, this definition of the uh, AZIL in SOTIF, and uh, it's uh, not expected to be part of the standard. Then the question, another question is, um, is there any guideline on how to determine, uh, determine uh, sort of targets? Uh, yes, there are some guidelines, uh, but uh, I would uh, not open this topic today since it's not, uh, the validation part is not um, part of this uh, webinar because uh, otherwise it will monopolize the time for other questions. Feel free to send me an email and I will be happy to have a chat directly with you. I will share my uh, email address uh, here in the chat box and you can send me an email. Yeah, a, a, a very good question is uh, how we can evaluate a noun scenario in sort of if they are unknown. Exactly. So the the, um, the intention of the sender is to, to uh, encourage or to force the users of the standard to think about that and to identify as much as you can the unknown scenarios. For example, if you are uh, doing the simulation, okay, and you will of course go to simulate your function and you may not think about to simulate a scenario and having a construction machine in, in front of the, the your car. So whenever you have identified a scenario that you couldn't be able to identify it beforehand, it comes from part three to part two. So here, uh, most of the time, we would like to evaluate how many scenarios that we could identify that were basically unknown, but now we know them. Okay, so and here you can do it by the means of the simulation or you know, very often I have seen that this is also something that we do. Uh, we combine not only the simulation but uh, the expert analysis as well as having a look on the, on the accident statistic and make sure that your AV will not cause the same accident as a conventional driver. So if you have, if you combine uh, or also uh, another source is also, as I said, uh, internet for the uh, uh, misuses. Okay, and if you combine this various source, then you will end up with uh, probably a, a very very big list of the unknown scenarios that they are now known. <laughs> and then uh, you have enough justification to say, well, at the beginning we had zero unknown scenarios, and now we have identified hundred of them thousand of them, had a thousand of them, and now our ARIA 3 is much, much more smaller. Okay, so it seems that there are no more questions. If um, you have uh, any topic regarding the trainings, online trainings, or any topic regarding the functional safety cybersecurity, I would be very happy uh, to have a chat with you. Do not hesitate to contact me by email or by um, following our page on the, on the LinkedIn. You may be also uh, keep in touch for the next webinars. You're perfectly in time. I thank you so much for your intention and also your contribution.
and uh, hope for, to see you soon.